Good morning, folks. We've got a solar wind impact to diagnose, things to look for in the coming days, and a rundown of the top science articles. We are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were relatively quiet. Plasma activity within the corona is increasing, as you saw in the red opening view, but the production from that activity has been minor thus far. None of the active regions are flaring or producing considerable CMEs. That incoming sunspot is still trudging along by itself. So we head to the solar wind, and the easiest place to start is up top, red and black, and that spike towards the right side of the panel. That's the geomagnetic impact of the solar wind, based on plasma pressure and magnetic angle relative to Earth's field, and below that the increases you see in yellow and purple are the weak leading edge of a coronal hole stream. The bulk of it is still expected to be on the way from the northern coronal hole, so that brief KP4 instability may not be all we get if the solar wind has any further intensification. Let's go next to a paper on solar storm effects. Both coronal hole streams and CMEs work the electric geospace region, and today we're looking at rare penetrations of relativistic electrons from the Van Allen belts down into the upper atmosphere. While currently this only happens about twice per year, they are now poised to capture the future events, and during those solar impacts we should begin to see more of these relativistic electron penetrations as Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken and our planet becomes more vulnerable to space weather. Up next, I'm wagging my finger a bit at the new climate study making the rounds on the internet. I did indeed read this one in Climate Dynamics but chose to ignore it based on its use of the exact same RCP scenarios that we've railed on all year. The worst of which, the one definitively not representative of reality, RCP 8.5, that's indeed the basis for the climate scare coming out of this one. This is where you can't just read the headline, and you need to be well versed enough in the peer reviewed literature to spot a paper stuck in the past. To learn more about this topic, the problems identified in the models, watch our climate playlist linked below and at our channel homepage. If you click Suspicious Observers and find those playlists, the climate one is also going to deliver a ton of this solar forcing of the terrestrial climate. Here, we're not even into the particle forcing, but irradiance and in solar flux units, and it appears that both the overall effect and the 11-year cycle of sunspots is much more influential over the middle and upper atmosphere than had been previously credited. That's about the understatement of the century. Its ability to not only have higher irradiance effects, but particle forcing, works the entire atmosphere at once through the geomagnetic and geoelectric systems, the atmospheric circuit. Last but not least, folks you can easily search online for when the ocean allegedly was overtopped the United States, 300 million years ago in the breadbasket, 100 million years ago, up to about 90 million years ago. But folks, in what is officially one of the largest dating readjustments ever, they're now saying that a shallow sea existed over Colorado about 5 million years ago. When you consider the simple absurdity of such a change, it makes you think about the Tibetan ice caps redated with Krypton from over a half a million years old to a product of the Younger Dryas, or the Australian Crater, taken from over 300,000 years old to under 200. This dating thing they do on this planet just doesn't work so well. We greatly appreciate your support. The wind maps weren't so appreciative of my presence this morning, so we'll let you on your way. Subscribe, because we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.